Hi guys. It is a lovely rainy night. I am thrilled to say a rainy night in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Little dog and I, we're hiding out in our tiny house. Oh man, is it getting dark earlier. It's 9.15. It feels like it should be about 11 o'clock here on a... It is a Monday night. I think it's Monday night, August 28, 2022. So, uh, I'm just going to give you a little brain teaser here. We're going to, I'm going to go over here to the mainstream media and read a couple of stories. And your challenge is to guess what the common denominator among these three stories is. But before we get into the three or four stories, I just want to, uh, as long as I'm over here on the mainstream media, several versions of this story uh, about Elon Musk, his latest controversy, and uh, hallelujah, it is about time to, uh, to give Elon Musk some good, I don't give Elon much good press here, I don't, I don't know if this is good press. But it's just saying I finally can agree with something that Elon Musk is saying. It would be real nice if I had queued up the story. Uh, well, here we go. Okay. Several versions. This is Business Insider's version. Elon Musk says the world still needs to use oil and gas or, quote, civilization will crumble, close quote. Thank you very much, Elon Musk, for trying to explain. Obviously, Elon must be a listener to Collapse Chronicles because Elon Musk has figured out, like anyone else with a brain, uh, that civilization will crumble without fossil fuels. So if you're a fan of civilization, like I am, uh, despite what I might sound like, some people think I am not a fan of global industrial civilization. Being a human, I absolutely love global industrial civilization, and it's going to suck. It's going to suck when this whole thing crashes and burns. Uh, when we think we're going to stop running on fossil fuels because this entire civilization is 100% dependent on fossil fuels. Let the owner of an electric car company explain uh, this to you. Okay, take it away. Elon Musk, quote, Realistically, I think we need to use oil and gas in the short term because otherwise civilization will crumble. One of the biggest challenges the world has ever faced is the transition to sustainable, sustainable energy and to a sustainable economy, that will take some decades to complete. Hmm. At this time, we actually need more oil and gas, not less. So, if you are a fan of global industrial civilization, which, as Elon Musk, the owner of a, an electric car company, knows that this civilization is built on fossil fuels, and you are a fan of global industrial civilization, as I am, uh, if, if, if you think the highest and best use of this planet is to continue global industrial civilization, then uh, Elon Musk, hallelujah, uh, knows exactly what he's talking about. Now, there could be a little uh, problem 
with uh, with this, of course. And so we're going to look at a few more stories. And I'm seeing it, how long it takes you to uh, find the common denominator by these stories on the mainstream media today. Many versions of this. This was actually, I think, no, this was the third biggest story on the uh, on the planet. Uh, many versions of it. This is good old USA Today. Uh, we're going to kind of mash up USA Today and go, oh, good old Seth Borenstein from AP. So this is how USA Today is playing this story uh, inevitable inevitable melting Greenland ice sheet will send seas nearly a foot higher even if even if the entire world stop burning fossil fuels today a new study finds the Greenland ice sheet would still lose enough ice to add nearly a foot to rising sea levels. Uh, melting over the past century has altered the ice sheet's equilibrium, according to the study led by two glaciologists at the National Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland. For the sheet for the ice sheet to correct that imbalance, it will lose an estimated 100 trillion tons of ice, adding at least 10.8 inches to global average sea levels. And uh, this is good old Jason Box. If you remember Jason Box, he pretty much got run out of the United States for his family. When was it? Like six years ago when uh, Jason Box uh, in some interview said, here comes an F-bomb guy's warning, uh, when he said in some interview or some article he wrote years ago, I think we're fucked. And of course he lost his job and he, and he had to resurface over there in Denmark. Uh, so I noticed that Jason is not dropping many F-bombs anymore, but he is saying that the 10.8 inches is, quote, a very conservative rock bottom minimum, said Jason Box, a glaciology professor with Denmark's Geological Survey. Um, anyway, we're going to head over uh, to uh, how good old Seth Borenstein is playing this story about even if it, this, this has nothing to do the, the, the this 10.8 inches uh, is already baked into the cake, the bare minimum. It makes no difference at this point whether the entire planet stops burning fossil fuels or takes Elon Musk's advice and keep on burn, baby, burn, drill, baby, drill, burn, baby, burn, and keep this uh, house of cards going as long as we can. So this is how Seth is uh, reporting this story on AP. <clears throat> zombie ice from Greenland will raise sea level 10 inches. Greenland's rapidly melting ice sheet will eventually raise global sea levels by at least, now that he's saying 10.6 inches is 27 centimeters, which is more than twice, more than twice as much as previously forecast according to a study published Monday. That is because of something that could be called zombie ice. 
zombie ice is doomed ice that, while still attached to thicker areas of ice, is no longer getting replenished by parent glaciers now receiving less snow. <clears throat> Without replenishment, the doomed ice is melting from climate change and will inevitably raise seas, you know, making no difference uh, what we do with fossil fuels. Uh, quote, this is, I guess, Jason Box's buddy William Colgan, glaciologist William Colgan, quote, it's dead ice. It's just got to melt and disappear from the ice sheet. The ice has been consigned to the ocean regardless of what climate emissions scenario we take now. Yeah, study lead author Jason Box said it is, quote, more like one foot in the grave, close quote, the unavoidable 10 inches in the study is more than twice as much sea level rise as scientists had previously expected from the melting of Greenland's ice sheet. The study in the journal Nature Climate Change said it could reach as much as 30 inches by the end of the century. By contrast, last year's IPCC report projected a range of 2 to 5 inches for <clears throat> likely sea level rise from Greenland ice melt by the year 2100. Uh, anyway, uh, back to this USA Today. I'm getting my articles mixed up. Uh, anyway, somewhere in one of these stories, uh, here's, I guess, yet another co-author of the study, David Barr. David Barr. Uh, as a third author of this, he's from, you know, out there at University of Colorado in Boulder. Quote, none of us who wrote this paper are going to be at all surprised when we blast right past that, meaning that 10.8 inches. It is entirely plausible that it is going to be twice as bad Close quote. He said it is, quote, entirely likely that the sea level rise, that the sea level could rise an estimated 30 inches. Uh, a projection not out of line with the previous forecast said Barr, quote, that is a very bad case scenario. We're talking about large portions of of places like New York, Miami, and Bangladesh disappearing. Well, at least there is some good news uh, in this forecast as we can kiss goodbye large portions of places like New York, Miami, and Bangladesh. Uh, I can't think of a better way to save the planet than to make New York, Miami, and Bangladesh disappear. That would be a great start to saving the planet. Okay, but now, I don't know. I'm, we're going to touch on three more stories from the mainstream media, and you try to find the common theme. I'm not sure if these are all three based on the same study. If this is one study, two studies, or three studies, but... I guess this is the whole planet we're going to start with. Deadly heat to surge by 2100, even with 
emissions reductions. This is a little bit different than what Jason was just saying about it. if we just you know stop if we reduce uh, even with emissions reductions, it is already baked in the cake as it were, for deadly heat to surge by 2100. Okay. Much of the world will face a significant uptick in deadly heat waves by the end of the century, even if countries manage to meet their agreed-upon emissions reduction goals, a new study has found. Such heat events will be three to ten times more common in 2100 than they are today in the U.S., Western Europe, China, and Japan, regardless of efforts to keep global warming below two degrees Celsius, according to the study published in Communications Earth and Environment. Uh, as part of the Paris Climate, the, you know, that absolute joke Paris Climate Agreement that was signed at the 2015 United Nations Climate Change Conference, participating countries agreed to adhere to this limit with huh, with huh, with huh, 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 huh. Hopes of keeping the increase to an even smaller one and a half degrees C. Yes. To improve their chance of success, each nation submitted its own climate action plan to cut greenhouse gas emissions. But the authors of the new study fear that these efforts will be insufficient to drive down the heat. Quote, this is lead author Lucas Vargas Zepatello from the University of Washington. Quote, the record-breaking heat events of recent summers will become much more common in places like North America and Europe. For many places close to the equator, by 2100, more than half the year uh, will be a challenge to work outside, ev even if we begin to curb emissions. Close quote. Blah, blah, blah. So from the whole world... Let's just zero in to the U.S. since it is USA Today, or I guess in this case USA Tomorrow. Although looking at the forecast for Southern California, I guess is this is for this weekend. Dramatic increase in deadly U.S. heat waves now likely inevitable. A dramatic increase in deadly heat waves is now likely inevitable, a study published Thursday said. Yeah, this is the same. Uh, this is the same study. But, of course, they're playing up the hopium in USA Today. The authors say there is still... There is still... All right. There is still... Hope that global temperature increases due to human-caused climate change can be curbed, can be curbed, which would avert even more catastrophic heat in some areas on Earth. So this is the best we can hope for, is curbing 
even more catastrophic heat. You know, the catastrophes are coming. Look at Pakistan, look at China. Uh, the catastrophes are already here. So the best case scenario is to avert even bigger catastrophes in the future. But, but, even if the global temperature goals of the Paris Agreement are met, study authors warn that heat waves are destined to become more prevalent in coming decades. And we're going to wind up in Europe. See if you can find, again, I don't, this is from Bloomberg. I don't know if this is the same study or another study. Europe's record heat wave, you know, which is, they're calling the worst in 500 years, I think. Europe's record heat wave will be the summer norm by 2035. Europe's record-breaking heat wave will be just an average summer in less than 15 years, even if countries meet their climate goals with regular droughts and fires set to become the norm. Yeah, so this is a study... A report by the Met Office hardly said this is this is uh, the UK's uh, climate office. So this is a different study looking at uh, Europe. Quote quoting the report: By the end of the century, a typical summer will be over four degrees Celsius hotter than pre-industrial levels. More than twice the one and a half degree target set by the Paris Agreement, according to the report. Uh, there you go. Uh, this is David King from the Climate Crisis Advisory Group. Quote, the situation is still set to get worse, with weather in Europe predicted to become even more extreme than seen this summer, and this data does not fully account for the instability of the Arctic, which we know is a global tipping point that could have major cascading consequences for the entire planet, close quote. So there you go, guys. You might as well uh, join forces with Elon Musk and admit it doesn't make a damn bit of difference at this point. It makes no difference. All of this crap uh, these climate goals, this Paris Agreement, their jokes, their hopium, their optimism. We are toast. We might as well drill baby drill, burn baby burn, and, uh, and get out there and enjoy this while we still can. Uh, because every day is getting tougher. It was hotter here in Ithaca, New York today than uh, in uh, Tampa, Florida. Although they're saying Thursday, September 1st, we're looking at a high of 67 degrees in Ithaca, New York. I think it's going to be about 110 in L.A. So, uh, get out there and enjoy global industrial civilization while you still can. Because uh, <laughs> this house of cards is coming down. Anyway. Yes, little dog.
the little dog is already sacked out in the tiny house. Bye, guys.